Have you heard of pilgrims on the Camino being denied the bed, refused the entrance to the albergue, or even being expelled from one? This is all because of that. Annex number one, the official government regulation. It's a code of conduct designed especially to prevent such troubles. We've translated and condensed it and so easily digestible 10 key points, which I might not be obvious. We will dive deep into them to ensure that your Camino experience is free from misunderstandings and unpleasant surprises. What sets Camino de Santiago apart is the unique blend of experiences, like walking the miles and miles in the variable landscapes where the silence and solitude can allow you to deeply understand yourself, but also sharing the meals with your fellow pilgrims, freshly known family, and also sharing the accommodation together. These places are called albergues, common places like the summer camps when all the pilgrims and the bunk beds are sharing and living their experience of Camino de Santiago. It's like the summer camp when everyone is staying next to each other in the bunk beds. Depending on the albergues, there might be 14, 16 beds, or in some even a hundred. Staying in albergues is not only cost efficiently because it could be from eight to 10 euros, but also it gives you this opportunity to live the minimalist pilgrim's life. Now, different types of albergues, from the private ones, which are gonna be a bit more expensive, to the parochial, which often are donation-based, and the ones that belong to the government called municipal albergues. So let's explore the norms, rules, obligations of every pilgrim staying in the municipal albergues and not only. So the first one of those key points is don't assume that you can stay for more than one night. Understand the idea of the albergues. This is the place made for the pilgrims walking and coming back from Santiago because back then you were in a pilgrim if you didn't make your way back home. That's not the place to spend seven days of your holidays. It's the place to come, spend one night, live the vibe and move towards your destination. Because the day tomorrow, other pilgrim will come and will need the bed. But have in mind, if your physical conditions do not allow you to walk, if you have to go to the doctor, if you have a fever, you have an injury, speak to the hospitaleros, the employees of the albergues, and they might and probably will allow you to stay one more day. Don't expect to reserve in advance. Those places do not accept reserves, a part of the one case which we're gonna talk in a second. They work on the basis of first comes, first served. And this is actually the, the order of coming. So the first will be accepted pilgrims walking by foot and the pilgrims walking by bike or by horse or by any other means, they probably will have to wait until the first walking pilgrims come. The same happens of the distance. First in admission will be the pilgrims walking from far away. If this place is your first stop, probably you will have to wait until some of the pilgrims from farther away will come. A good idea is actually to book any other spot for, for the first day, so you allow other pilgrims to come and use the space as they need. The only time you can actually book the albergue is when you are a disabled pilgrim. That means that those places have rooms with the bathroom specially designed for the pilgrims on the wheelchair or with any other needs. First of all, albergues doors close at 10 o'clock. That means that from that moment onwards, no one can get in. And I remember years back, we did the Camino French Way and in Pamplona, literally the third night on the Camino, we met an Irish guy who was denied entrance to the albergue because he arrived after 10. He had to overspend money booking something at a really late time. And then at six o'clock when they opened the door, he came and he told us the story, took his bag and started walking the Camino without even one moment of sleep. Once the doors are closed at 10 o'clock, normally at 10 or 10.30, they turn off the light and keep them off until six o'clock next day. Now you'd laugh and have a parties in the common spaces of sleep because many people, you'll be surprised how many people actually go to sleep around eight, even seven in some places. And the other thing, you, if you start early, because many of the people start around five or six or seven, 
make your bag before, prepare your bag before, make it ready for you. And in the morning when you start to do any of your packing, keep it quiet or keep it outside of the sleeping room. Use the headlight. This headlight has two different lights, the red light and the white light. And the red light is actually designed for the interiors. This is designed, if you put it on and it doesn't blind you, it is still good to see. But going outside in the dark, you're probably going to use white. If you use white, probably someone going to be waking up and might be uncomfortable situation. The fourth important part is don't forget to leave before 8 o'clock a.m. This is crucial because people working in those albergues will start to clean and start to prepare for next pilgrims to come. If you decide to have a longer sleep that day, use a private albergues when the owners will allow you to stay longer, use the hotels or the Airbnb because these places will allow you for the late checkout. Albergues are made for pilgrims who start early. And even I remember we had this thing with Erika in Burgos. At six o'clock, one hospitalero was putting the opera music in the municipal albergue just to wake everyone up, making the round the round of three floors and then on the end making the second run for people who still didn't wake. And number five, verify your pilgrim's identity by using credential. These stamps will tell a hospitalero where did you stay the last night. This will tell you that you're actually a pilgrim, you're not the random tourist, and without this, you're not gonna be allowed to enter any of the albergues. Another thing is that if you're just starting your Camino and if you want to stay in an albergue and you still don't have a credential and you cannot really justify that you're a pilgrim only from your look and your backpack and your super excited face, you can get these in the albergues themselves and they will allow you to stay. Look at the stamps that, that we got. This is actually last year in, in the French Camino and I remember each and every place that we stayed. Number six, please pay your albergue in front. This is written and unwritten rule because unwritten rule applies to the donation-based albergues that normally belongs to the church or any other association. That means they do not have a price tag on them. They offer you food, they offer you uh, dinners and the breakfast, but they all donation-based. Municipal albergues, they do not offer you any food, only the kitchen to prepare your food in. They're gonna mention the price for you, pay it in front, many of them accept the credit cards, nearly all the official ones, the unofficial you will have to pay with money. So take some cash with you, don't assume that those places are cheap and or even free because sometimes they actually deserve more than any other place that you will encounter on the Camino. And number seven on the list, do not leave your bags and your belongings unattended. Always, always have your bum bag with you and inside you have your passport, you have your money, you have your Camino journal, you have any of these things that are really important for you. You wouldn't carry lots of money with you, only the bare minimum and you wouldn't leave those bare minimum lying somewhere because the place itself won't be responsible for any missing stuff. It doesn't happen a lot because Camino is a safe place, but it happens. But not only. Your backpack, don't put it on the bed. Don't put it on the bed because backpack, it's a beautiful travel machine for bed bags and any other dirt. Leave it under the bed, leave it on the side and sometimes even outside of the room. And if you have your area next to the bed, spread it with all your bags. If it looks like um, a little Sunday market, that's also not cool because respecting other people's place, it's number one rule, written and unwritten for every pilgrim. Do not use not designated places for food. This is the main rule for safe and hygiene. That means that there are spaces designed for sleep and the spaces designed for eat. Every albergue has a kitchen which you can use. Pretty basic, Some, many of them there are things missing. So if you had a little bit of a, your tr camping spoon, your camping knife or even um, a silicone cup, 
it's a good idea to bring it with you. They're not really equipped with everything because that's what it is. But you wouldn't extend your food party into the sleeping area for many hygienic reasons. Not only cleaning, but also not disturbing other people. Maybe come from many different backgrounds. For some, that might be nothing, but for others, this could be an entire universe and, and lots of trouble. Don't waste water and energy. This is number one. This is common sense. But in Camino de Santiago, it has a totally different meaning. Something really natural is once you arrive to Alberga, you go in and have a shower. And you're using the hot water because it cools down your muscles. And then you're using the mixture of hot and cold just to make your blood go faster and just to regenerate be, be the body, be healthier. But it all comes down from the boiler that warms the water. And it's cool if you're the first one in Alberga, but it's not cool if you're the last one. And if it's cold outside, you're getting into Alberga and there is no hot water left. This year in Spain, there are lots of drought problems and many of the states have a strict rules of saving the water, not only hot, but water in general. So have it in mind. Number two, electricity and the usage of sockets. Sharing is caring and when there is a little, a little resource, the sharing is really necessary. The point that we learn in bushcraft and survival skills, we're learning on the summer camps in the forest, it's leave the place, leave it in the better condition that you found it. Treating the albergue not as a random passing place, but rather as your house. In many places they will ask you to take the sheets and, and the pillow covers off the mattress. It saves them time to clean. At the same time will let ask you to put the rubbish into exact place and, and keep the space nice and tidy cleaning after yourself in the bathroom. Keep it nice to other pilgrims because you would like that someone keeps it nice for you. This information, although super important and necessary to have your Camino de experience free from misunderstanding, it's only a pinch of salt because that video, which is just on the side, will tell you pretty much everything that you would like to know about Camino to make it surprises free. Have a look.